Hi. Well, as most of you know, I, I like to do these Blue Apron meals. Um, today we're doing the beef tartinis uh, with zucchini and uh, pistu. I have no idea how to say that, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. Um, as you know, all of the food comes with these meals, so you know they, they ship you in a box with ice packs and everything. Um, you can watch my unboxing video to see the type of boxes they do, but they do send you all the ingredients. They send you these little knick-knack packages like this, which contain all of the small little pieces of that are going to be used for the meals. For example, the capers and, you know, we need cheese, grated Parmesan cheese. And then, uh, looks here, the uh, Latina cheese. So they send you all these. Each one's different, obviously, based on the meals. So I'm going to make this video and maybe put a little couple little pointers in here as well. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're going to cut our bread into four one-inch slices. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here so that we don't end up with little pieces of the bread. We want to actually cut these ends off, and I'll show you what I mean. So, I've got a bread knife here. Uh, you can do this with or without a bread knife. I just think it's easier to do with a bread knife. Okay, so we've cut the ends off. Now we want to get four one-inch pieces. Now we can actually recipe calls for lemon. We're just going to quarter the lemon. Uh, we do not have to uh, make any zest or anything, so we won't be doing that. But I always cut the ends off, as you can see there. Another thing I want to show, chopping or cutting or anything, a lot of people hold their knife down here, you know, and then they try to chop or cut. Hold your knife closer to the actual blade. Now this is something I learned uh, for a different reason, but <laughs> uh, it gives you more control over your knife. See, as opposed to being out here, and you have to make a lot more movements, whereas I can slice and dice just right there. Boom. Done. You see me do this in a lot of my other videos when I have to chop things. Um, pay attention to where I place my hands and that might help you out. Okay, we're going to cut our zucchini. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of an interesting cut, so here we go. Cut the ends off. Set those aside. And then uh, what we're going to do is quarter this. This way. Okay, so... Then we want to get little two inch strips. So essentially, you know, cut these in half on this particular one. There you're done. Capers, and we're going to roughly chop these. So, roughly chop, you don't have to do a lot to it. Um, I just kind of take my knife and rock it over them. And we'll go one more in another direction. And that's what I consider the rough chopped. Okay, our cheese is the uh, Fontina cheese. Uh, the directions say to cut off any rind. Uh, rind, this piece does not have any rind to it. Rind would look different. It would look like, you know, like a crust to the bread or something like that uh, on your cheese and you would, you would cut that off. So what we're going to do is actually uh, small dice this here. See again how I hold my knife. I like to make a rocking motion with it. Just makes things quicker for me to do. And then the tip down on the end there. And uh, just lets me go a lot quicker that way. Maybe made that one a little bit too small, but hey, small dice is small dice, right? Put those in our jars. I love these little containers. Uh, you can pick them up just about anywhere. Walmart, Target, Ikea. Doesn't really matter. All right. Okay, time to cook our spinach. We've put it in uh, olive oil. Heated that up. I wash everything in these bags and we'll let them kind of dry because it's perfect. All right. Season with salt and pepper. Cook the 
this until it's all completely wilted because we're going to finally chop this stuff up to make a spinach pesto here. I use this pan, I bought it at Ikea for less than ten dollars and it has been one of the best pans that I've ever had, uh, especially for the price. Uh, a lot of what you see me, my cutting boards and knives and everything come from Ikea as well. So. They do make some decent products. And as you can see, our spinach is wilted and cooked. So I'm going to turn this off. We finally chopped this, so we are going to do just that. I'm going to touch it because it's hot. I'm just going to run my knife in this rocking motion. That's the bowl this is going into. See how I'm just going across this? I'm not spreading it. Making sure that my knife is up. You know, you know we're not scraping these and bruising these. Any movement we make is when the knife is not touching the food. Now there's professional chefs out there that can do this and they chop, 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 chop. I'm home taught <laughs> and this is this is my method you can use whatever method you want uh, these these are little tips and tricks that work for me I'm gonna just keep chopping this you never want to drag your food because it will bruise it so you always pick up but don't like put this down and then scrape your food away from you. You will bruise the leaf or uh, dull your knife. Always go see if, how I'm doing that. And then I just pick this up. There we go. Now we'll make our pesto. We're gonna make our pesto. Pesto calls for two, the juice of two of these wedges, so lemon. Having problems using one hand today. Okay, and then we put our Parmesan cheese in there. Anytime I make something like this, I just use one of these little whisks salt and pepper to taste well I'm not doing that you can uh, I prefer to try to use as little salt and pepper as possible I like the natural flavorings of the food that I'm eating I'm not saying that it's bad if you put in a lot of salt and pepper I, I just found that after cooking with blue apron the foods just have so much natural flavor that you don't need a lot of salt and pepper that's my personal taste uh, obviously other people use it so that's perfectly okay for them and, and you as well all right there we go now we want to add some olive oil to this I get my olive oil from Costco it's this blend here you don't have to do organic I just think this you know tastes good <laughs> we're back over here cooking in the same pan you cook that spinach cucumbers we're just gonna cook these until they're lightly browned toast our bread you can do this however you want but I'm doing it this way How we're going to get this bread to have a little bit of a garlicky taste. I've cut the garlic in half. Um, you don't have to, you can just use regular garlic, but you just take and rub your meat, I mean your bread, uh, with this. We're going to cook the meat here in a minute. But... Get over, get the other side. This is a good, good, nice flavor, and you don't have to use garlic or butter, like a garlic butter or powders. 
Just use garlic itself. The sliced, thinly sliced beef. And uh, what we're doing is just spreading it out right now. Uh, the recipe recommends you do that by hand. Uh, well, as you can see, it's working just fine by this method here. I am going to salt, <clears throat> salt and pepper this. Time to top this garlic toast. Put the beef right in the middle there. Just pile it on. it for two to four minutes or until the cheese has melted. Okay, here we are. So we're going to top this with the remaining pesto. Mix it up a little bit. Just take a little bit right on top. Cover that. Take our cooked I kept calling it cucumber, and I do apologize. It is a zucchini. 